Welcome back to the series, guys and gals. Um, so, I got online last night and read horror story after horror story of people getting their engines rebuilt um, by either Ford or some shop somewhere. And, you know, a couple of weeks later, they just, their engine is bleeding like a stuck pig oil, you know. Um, so, what I did uh, and what uh, some people did recommend was I used that T31 um, on my rocker box mating surface here. I'm going to do it to the other rocker box as well. Um, and I also, this morning, off camera, I pulled the rear cover back off and I put a bead of that T31 RTV around that O-ring as well, just like the rocker box. So, um, just... Now, I'm going to get that rocker box on... Well, actually, I'm going to get it back on the engine stand, get the rocker box on, um, and then I'm going to start putting that head together and I will be right back. <laughs> Alright, um, so I just realized, I never showed you guys the, the O-rings on the heads. Um, the other heads on the engine, I can't show you that one. But uh, this is the little, what, that's what that means by whenever you're O-ringing the head. They take uh, their machining tools and they machine a little groove that this piece of wire can fit down in. And then they hammer this piece of wire in there. And that's what fire ringing or O-ringing the heads is. Um, now, okay. So whenever it comes to spending the money on this, um, I would. Because, yes, head, stubs, head studs help, but it, it's, not a, it's not that strong of a guarantee that they'll never fail, your head gasket will never fail again. Especially if you've never done head studs. Just go ahead and do them both at the same time. Like, seriously, where I'm at, it was right at $400 to get these O-ringed, or fire-ringed, or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so now that we got it back on the engine stand here, I took my uh, five top uh, smaller bolts that hold in the head. You should wanna make sure that those go in before you tighten down the entire head and then figure out that these won't thread in. So uh, now I'm gonna grab that rocker box. Uh, it's been sitting for a little while, so I think the RTV is ready to go. And we are gonna sit it on here, and I'll be right back. All right, so we got the rocker box sat on, and then I took the one, two, three, four, the eight uh, smaller bolts that go in the rocker box and hold it down. I got those in and threaded. All right, so I went ahead and I lubed um, the top of these valve stems with some Lucas oil and put on those pieces just like that. The wording is the same all the way down. The Let's see if I can get a damn better view. You got those three uh, numbers there to the left and then the C3 or whatever it says. Um, I put the three numbers down on all of them so they're all the same. See? Okay, well I'm gonna get the push rods now. Um, they go in these holes right here. You wanna lube both ends because both of those uh, see uh, constant friction. So we're gonna get those lubed and get them in the holes. And like, it's a good idea to get a flashlight and shine down in there and make sure you have it seated down in the hole. You don't want a bent push rod. Um, so let me do that and I will be right back. Um, before I throw these in, I'm gonna 
If you look right here, you see that little ball bearing? Um, I'm going to take uh, oil squirting guns and squirt all of those ball bearings. Um, just the surfaces that are going to be touching stuff. And uh, I'll be right back. All right, um, so I just took the uh, rocker assemblies um, and sat them back in. I obviously put lube in between this uh, friction point and between the top of the rocker arm and the uh, push rods. So they're all lined up. They're not tightened down. We need to do the head studs first. So I need to get my uh, ARP head studs and my washers and my lube, and I need to lube all of that up and then we can start uh, torquing this head down. Okay, so I got the washers on and I got those all lubed up got the nuts in my hand I'm about to start uh, hand tightening these down and then I'll start the three stages of torquing this which is I believe 70 140 210 um, for the ARP head studs and let's do it Excuse me, man. A little out of breath. Those things are toit. Okay. Um. Yep, I was correct. The inner head bolts are 23 foot pounds as well. So I'm about to hit these for the rocker box. These for the rocker arms, rocker box, and inner head bolts. They're all 23 foot pounds. I'm gonna do all of those right now. Okay, so now I have um, the injectors, I have my T40, and I have my um, hold down clamps for those injectors. So I'm gonna install the, four, install the four injectors. Uh, let me get one out of the bag. We gotta make sure that all the O-rings are still good. All right, so now this is gonna be the time where you go through your gasket set and you get your injector um, O-rings and replace those. I've already done that, so um, I don't have to show you and I don't think I would need to tell you how to replace an O-ring. Um, so in your gasket set, don't forget, there's, a, there's copper washers for all your injectors. You wanna go ahead and slap on new copper washers. Um, and then we will be getting hold down clamp and okay so the hold down sits on the injector like a collar and there's only one place where it can sit and there's a notch in the injector that that matches with a notch on the hold down all right so let's see if I can do this one-handed we have our copper o-ring on or copper I guess it is a copper o-ring um, okay we got it sat down and where is it at okay threading it in she's going down all right let me get my wrench on here 
and I've always just tightened. I've I've had these injectors in and out. I've I've replaced injectors, and I've always just done um, a nice and snug. Uh, I've never torqued it down. I've just done it nice and snug with my wrench. All right, so same exact procedure for all seven other injectors, and uh, once I'm done with that, I will be back. Okay, so now that we have the injectors in. Um, we are at the oil rail. So this is what feeds the oil to your injectors so that they can fire. These four nozzles right here on each side. There's one just like it on the other side of the block. Um, but there's a specialty tool needed. It's like an inside tool to get this out so you can replace the O-rings underneath of these. Um, you can check them though, and if they don't wiggle around and move, the O-rings are fine. Um, and being that you can get to these by just taking the valve covers off, um, my o-rings are fine, so I'm going to leave it and I'm going to save the o-rings that came in this ultimate kit So that if I ever need to reseal them down the road, I don't have to rebuy these um, so uh, Let's go ahead and get this in and then um, the little screws I would say it's probably something like 18 foot-pounds or something like that. It's just nice and hand tight I've taken these off and put them on several times and I've never used a torque wrench and it's been completely fine. So let's get this set on and uh, torque down and we'll be right back. Okay, so we got the oil rail on. Now um, what we need to do is get our new valve cover gasket. Um, I'm actually going to walk over and pressure wash that valve cover. I never got around to doing it beforehand and honestly because the rest of my engine's clean I want that to be clean too. <laughs> I'm a weirdo. All right. So I'm going to go pressure wash that valve cover. I'll be right back. We'll install the dummy plug, dummy plug and the standpipe and the valve cover gasket and um, the valve cover will go on and we will be done with this head. All right, as you can see, the valve cover is all nice and shiny. We sat the, uh, the dummy plug in. The dummy plug is the shorter one and the shorter one goes towards the front of the engine. See, this is where the crankshaft would be. So that's the front of the engine. So we're gonna hand start it, and we got the standpipe started already. All right, nice and tight. All right, standpipe dummy plug is done. Um, gotta grab the valve cover gasket. <clears throat> okay, so I just discovered something that could be very uh, important to you too if you're doing this um, So the bolts that hold this oil rail down is the same size as The threads for the valve cover so um, if somebody worked on it before you or if you maybe um, Accidentally stripped it out because the rocker box is aluminum, so it's not that hard to do but um uh, Link in the description for the Healy coil set, and you will be able to fix the threads for uh, your oil rail bolts, too. Um, there you go, guys. Back at it. All right, I'm back. Uh, I had to end up Healy coiling a couple of more valve cover uh, bolt spots here. So, um, valve cover is all the way on. This side of the head is completely done. I've got my um, glow plug. Shit. Got my glow plugs down in here, so the only thing I need to do is get the glow plug harness plugged in. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna wait for the engine to be in the in the truck to do that because I don't want the wires to get caught on anything and possibly get ripped or something. Because I was actually able to reuse my glow plug harness that has been on the truck for a couple of years, <clears throat> and the trick to that was I didn't use the tool and try to pull it out at all. I left the wires in there, and as I disassembled the engine, when I got the uh, the nuts for the head studs off, and I went to pull the top of the rocker box off, by doing that, the rocker box actually pulled the uh, the the harness out of all of these holes for the glow plugs for me, and I didn't have to use the tool. It didn't break any of them at all, and I'm going to be able to be to uh, reuse that.